coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Have you ever tried to pray and your mind wanders? You know what your mind is wandering to? What you really ought to be praying about. And so I was taught early on, you know, pray for your husband. See what happens in your marriage if you just pray. And so I took that challenge and it really did. I started seeing huge um, differences in you. Worry, anxiety, and fear are really the same thing emotionally. They're just experienced on different levels. Worry, anxiety, and fear. They're stair steps. So fear is, and even fear is experienced in different intensities. And I say poodle to pit bull fear. You know, when you're experiencing fear, I delivered appliances in college for my uncle, and I was delivering a washer one day with a friend of mine, and we were delivering it, and I was pulling the, the, the washer through the house on a set of dollies, and he was on the other side of the washer and had this horrible look on his face. And so we put, installed the washer, and they had this little poodle in the house. And so when we got back in the truck, I said, what, what was that look on your face? He said, that poodle bit me from the time we walked in the time we walked out. <laughs> and I said, it hurt. He said, he didn't have any teeth. It just worried me. You know, so there's poodle type of fear, but then there's pit bull fear. Okay? Fear is a negative emotion caused by a real or perceived threat to our well-being. A negative, there's, there's a threat to our well-being, so we feel this emotion. Anxiety, again, is experienced in different intensities. And I have cowboy game to company layoffs. How many of you get nervous during cowboy games? <laughs> you know, the anxiety is to be uneasy and nervous about an event, person, or problem I can't control. I'm anxious because I can't control it. I wish I could control it, but I can't. So I feel anxious about that worry and I have weather to wedding kind of worry and worry is to mentally dwell on difficulty or trouble it just means a chronic concern and again this is the the least level I'm worried but worry can become anxiety and fear and fear fear can subside to anxiety and worry so it's really the same emotion it's just experienced on different levels but we're commanded in scripture not to do all three we are commanded in Scripture not to fear, not to be anxious, and not to worry. Now listen, listen to what I'm about to say now. God would never command us not to do something if we didn't have the ability not to do it. Right? Is that correct? Am I right? You can say amen if you agree. Okay, you agree. So God has commanded all of us not to fear, okay? The, the, by the way, the commandment do not fear or fear not is the most common commandment in the Bible. God created us to live in peace, not in fear. Let, let, me, let me make this statement. As much as you know the presence of God by peace, you know the presence of the devil by fear. God never created us to live in fear. And that's why constantly through the Bible we are commanded do not fear. God does not want us to live that way. And then in Philippians 4, 6, a scripture I'll read in just a little bit, the apostle Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. And I'll read the entire scripture in just a minute, and we'll talk about it. Anxiety. The Bible says, be anxious for not one thing. We have the ability to live without being anxious about one thing. And you, you say stress, anxiety, stress, on whatever level, it is the number one reason for sickness and disease. In America today, the number one reason for prescribed medications is stress and anxiety. The number one reason for doctor's office visits is stress and anxiety. It is a killer on every level. It literally causes us to live not as long, is to have a shorter lifespan. And then worry. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. And Jesus also told us, by the way, that uh, we were not to worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow, he said, has enough problems of its own, so don't worry about tomorrow. He would never say that if we didn't have the ability now not to do that. So I grew up worrying. I grew up with fear, anxiety, and worry. I just remember as a kid, I was always worried. And I had, you know, different fears. And I didn't, I didn't act like I was worried. I, you know, I kind of carried myself in a way that I didn't, I didn't seem to be fearful about other people, but I was. I had a lot of fear and anxiety in my life. It caused physical problems. 
especially skin problems when I was a kid, eczema and different kind of problems that I had. One time I went to the doctor with a skin problem. Uh, I was probably about 20 or 21 years old. And when I said, doctor, I've got this skin problem right here. And the doctor said, okay, great. And left the room. And the nurse came in, and I, I just wanted a prescription. You know, I just wanted him to give me a prescription. I go get my prescription filled, go home happy. I got my medicine. And the nurse came in with a cassette tape player, for those of you who remember cassette tapes. <laughs> and she put it on the counter and said, the doctor wants you to listen to this. And she pushed the play button, walked out, and it was on worry. And I, and I was so mad. I was just told, for, I didn't come here to get preached to. You know, I just want my medicine. But the problem that I had was not a physical problem. It was an emotional problem that became a physical problem. And that was the problem. I had relationship problems. I had problems with people pleasing and problems with control all at the same time. I had all kinds of problems. And then I came into the ministry. Never done a funeral, never done a wedding, never led a staff, only prepared for a couple of sermons. I didn't know it. The first time I did a funeral, I had to ask the guy at the funeral home what to do. And that was pretty bad. And so, I just, I, I, and I had, so when I came to the ministry, fear of man, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of financial failure, anxiety about every, everything. And the church was growing. The church was doing well. But I lived in constant anxiety and fear, which put Karen and I into a position, relational problems, emotional problems. I was a distracted father, on and on and on, all because of fear, anxiety, and worry in my life at that point. And the root of all fear, anxiety, and worry is the same. It's an orphan spirit. Let me tell you something about God. He absolutely loves to be a daddy. And the context of Jesus' statement of not worrying was the context of God being our father. And the reason that I grew up with so much fear, anxiety, and worry is because I didn't know that I had a father. I didn't know somebody was taking care of me. And I did not, even though I prayed as a pastor, a young pastor, and even though I had a relationship with God, I just didn't understand how much he loves being a father. Now, let me say this. The, I, I'm a, I have two children, four grandchildren. I absolutely love being a father. And I, abs and I love being a grandfather even more. I love being a father. I'm pappy, is what my grandkids call me. I love being pappy. And my grandchildren are never a bother to me. And what would hurt me the most is if they didn't let me pappy them. When my children or my grandchildren ask me to do something, it is one of the greatest joys of my life. God, and I'm evil compared to him. He adores you. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything that you're facing. And what he loves the most is to daddy us through every circumstance in our lives. The root issue of all fear, worry, and anxiety, chronic fear, worry, and anxiety is an orphan spirit. I can't tell you how many times in my life that the joy of my life has been robbed by worry and anxiety. And in the midst of my family and in the midst of the people that I enjoy the most, I couldn't enjoy it. And the Lord said, here's how you're going to overcome worry and anxiety. Focus on me. Consider worry and anxiety as enemies of your life that you're going to deal with every day at the beginning of the day. And enjoy the people in your life and stop worrying. I've changed my mind about worry and anxiety, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying. They are not normal and inevitable. They're common, but they're not normal. Jesus is normal. Everything else isn't normal. See, the reason that worry exists so often is because we just think it's normal. It's not normal. It's common, but it's not normal. It doesn't have to be in our life. And it's, it's robbing us of God. It's robbing us of our family in that. It distracts me from God and people. It robs me of my joy. And it exists because I allow it to exist. Listen to what I'm saying. Worry exists and anxiety exists because we allow it. We are in complete control of our lives. God would never command us to do something that we don't have the ability to do. So when God says, do not fear, do not worry, do not be anxious, we have the power of doing it. So let me tell you how to overcome worry and anxiety, and I'm done. Number one, consider them as agents of the enemy to destroy your life and to rob you of your joy. 
Worry and anxiety means the devil has implanted something in your life that's just sitting there intimidating you. And because of that, you can't focus on God and the people that you love. And that's the greatest problem with worry and anxiety. It robs you of your ability to worship, to love the people that you love. So it's an enemy. Every morning I'm going to wake up. Number two, turn every anxious and worrisome thought into a prayer until victory. Every worrisome and anxious thought, I'm going to pray until I get victory. This is a Philippians 4 that I referred to earlier. Be anxious for nothing. Not one thing. But in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Be anxious for not one thing. So let me, let's don't be religious about this. Let's, and I don't even mean be spiritual about it, okay? When you wake up in the morning, don't have a prayer list. Don't have a prayer list. Have a list that says this. This is what's bothering me today. Have you ever tried to pray and your mind wanders? You know what your mind is wandering to? What you really ought to be praying about. And you're sitting there trying to pray, but you're thinking about the guy that you hate, and you have to have a meeting with him today. And your mind is wandering at this anxious thought about money or something, and you're trying to be religious and pray these nice prayers. You'll either worry... You'll either pray or you're worried. And your old worry list is your new prayer list. And all day long, rather than being able to enjoy your life and the people in your life, you're just focused on the potential liability, the potential harm that's going to come from this situation today or sometime in the future. So you just can't ever enjoy your life. And you can't ever enjoy God. And that's the problem. So let me go back through this scripture. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication. Supplication means anything that helps you pray more effectively. Fasting, reading the word, worship, anything that helps you in your prayers. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What does that mean? Listen to me. You say, with thanksgiving, I'm going to let my request made known to God. That's, that means, God, thank you for all the things that you've done for me. That's not what that means. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God means As I'm praying, I'm thanking him that he loves me, he's hearing me, and he's going to answer my prayer. God, I thank, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you hear my prayers. I thank you, I'm coming to you because you're my loving daddy, you know everything going on in my life, and you care about it, and I'm thanking you right now that you're hearing this prayer, and you're going to answer me from heaven. And you walk through the all day long, not worrying about whether God's going to do it, you're thanking God because you know he's the best daddy in the universe. Listen, well-fathered children are fearless children. The root of all fear, worry, and anxiety is an orphan spirit because orphans are on their own and they have to take care of their own problems. And the devil wants you to feel as though that you're on your own and you have to solve your own problems. You have the best father in the universe. Stop grieving over the father you didn't have and start rejoicing that you have the best father in the universe. He is your daddy. He loves being your daddy. And he loves helping you process anything in your life. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too large. He just enjoys the ride. He just enjoys the relationship. And as we're sitting here obsessing about something, what it means is we're wasting the relationship. I'm going to say something to you, and I'm I'm telling you the truth. If Bill Gates was your daddy, you'd never worry about money again. Right? Well, your daddy can buy Bill Gates a million times over and not exhaust his pocket change. Huh? If I'm preaching good, you can say amen. amen. Thank you. Well, so with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes comprehension, it's called dumb peace. Peace that you're either dumb or you have the peace of God. You know? The peace, and everybody's looking at you saying, What are you on? Peace. Listen, you know you've prayed enough when you get peace. The saints of old called it praying through. And they say, I'm going to pray through this issue. And what they meant was, I'm going to pray until I get that peace. And it says it will guard your heart and your mind, your thoughts and your feelings. The word guard there is the Greek word fruruo, and it means to guard against a military invasion. 
Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and more prayer. Let your request go to God in prayer with thanksgiving. Thank Him that He's listening. He's going to do it. And the peace of God that passes, you, you won't even understand why you have so much peace. It will set a military guard around your mind and heart so the devil cannot penetrate it with fear, worry, and anxiety. Somebody say amen. amen. It's the best news in the world. Don't make it religious. Don't make it spiritual. Make it practical. What's eating at you? What are you worried about? What's coming against you? Hold hands with daddy and attack it. Put your eyes on God. And enjoy your life by faith, knowing that your daddy is in control. And you're not an orphan. You're the most well-fathered person in the world. All we've got to do is believe that. And the last thing is by faith, believe and confess that God is our loving dad and he cares for us. And for some people, that might be a stretch. Maybe because of the way we were raised or circumstances in our life. But Jesus said, Matthew 6, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all things. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't fear. You've got the best daddy in the universe, and he wants to attend you and father you through your life. He's the answer to every problem. I love this series, I Changed My Mind, because we can change our minds. And you know, almost all of us, you know, come into life and especially into adulthood with some really toxic thinking that changes our lives dramatically. But thank God we can change our minds. And so I hope this was a blessing to you. But you know, we have an entire series of messages uh, called I Change My Mind about fear, about, you know, all kinds of things, my attitude. And right now, uh, as you support marriage today, you know, we're a mission and a ministry. Hopefully we minister to you. We minister to millions of people across America, around the world, but we're a mission for marriage uh, to many people who desperately need this information. Please be generous with us if you could support us financially. And right now for your gift of any amount, we want to give you the CD single, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude. One of the most powerful messages you'll ever hear, I promise. And you'll give it away to somebody else because it is a, a blessing. For your gift right now of $55 or more, we'll get you the entire CD series I changed my mind along with my book, When Life Hurts. And so they go together so well because that book really ministers to the hurts that we have in our lives, which all of us have. All of us have toxic thinking. All of us have hurts from our past. And also right now for your gift of $90 or more, we'll get you the five-part DVD series, uh, I Changed My Mind along with the book, When Life Hurts. Super information to minister to you, to your marriage and your family. Here's how you can get it. I changed my mind. Overcome negative thoughts and live a life of freedom and peace through this practical series by Jimmy Evans. For your gift of $55 or more, you'll receive the CD series and Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts. For your gift of $90 or more, you'll receive the DVD series and book. Discover how to always have a positive attitude, how to overcome worry and anxiety, and how to eliminate fear and find fulfillment. We have the ability to expose, to challenge, and to expel any thought that is in our minds right now that doesn't belong there. For your gift of any amount to support the mission and ministry of marriage today, we'll send you the CD single, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude. Happiness is a choice within your control. You can change your mind and experience breakthrough in every area of your life. Experience this powerful series by Jimmy Evans today. Intimacy is the prize of marriage. It's the prize. It's when you get intimacy, you got everything. There will never be a day in my life I don't love Karen Evans. I've made my mind up once and for all, and I'll never change it. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage, but you have to do it God's way.
Well, this program is about changing our mind about worry and anxiety. Now, Karen, I want to I want to talk. We have just a little bit of time left here, but I want to talk about the issue of prayer. You know, Philippians four says, don't be anxious for anything, mm -hmm. but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace mm -hmm. that passes all comprehension will guard your mind and your heart. If you if you don't pray, you're going to fight. Right. If you don't pray, you're going to worry. Mm -hmm. Okay, because Philippians four talks about if you pray mm -hmm. about everything, don't be anxious for anything, mm -hmm. but pray about everything. That that God's promise is His peace mm -hmm. that gives you supernatural protection over your mind and heart. Well, you were the prayer warrior in our marriage at the beginning, and now we pray mm -hmm. about everything mm -hmm. in our marriage. But talk about this issue of prayer rather than worry and anxiety. Well, I think um, in, for women, I think we get into the worry and anxiety a lot more than the men just because we, we're always thinking, you know, we think and, and you know, I think that's... <laughs> so we're not thinking? Okay, well, excuse me, uh, <laughs> debatable. Okay, <laughs> but, but we're, we're, we think and yeah. so we're always thinking and we take thoughts places no man ever thought to go and so and so it's that's and that's how we we live our life and so you know I think for you you said it right you said prayer but the first thing that popped in my head is the reason I think prayer is so important is because it does get our thoughts in control right. because we've got to stop and we've got to stop thinking and then we need to start praying because so so if you make prayer a discipline um, because it, it starts out that way and it's a relationship that you can develop with the Lord that's so precious yes. and so I did it because exactly you're exactly right because I was anxious and worried and so I was taught early on you know pray for your husband see what happens in your marriage if you just pray and so I took that challenge and it really did I started seeing huge um, differences in you I mean your your attitude your demeanor your how you talk to me you started softening and I remember thinking oh my gosh this prayer thing works and it's not just the prayer thing it's God see when we pray and we trust God we're gonna we, we, it gets us out of the way. And then God is the one that can get in there and start yeah. doing the things in both of but, us but it also, that need to happen. You say, I uh, began to soften. The other thing is, when you're praying, you're at peace. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, if you're yes. not praying, mm -hmm. you're, you're all worried and anxious, and it changes the way you respond and to we, me. And we talk to each other that way. It's like, yeah. oh, you, you need to do this, <laughs> yeah. instead yeah. of just, you well, know. Well, so we come together and we, we pray. You know, Ma Matthew 18 says, if two on earth would agree together as touching anything they would ask, it would be done for them. Mm -hmm. And so in one part of our studio audience here, we have a couple that we used to walk in front of their house 30 <laughs> years ago, 20 years ago. We walked in front of their house every day with our dog hunter and we prayed and we did and we would uh, walk for talk for 45 minutes and pray for 45 minutes hundreds of answered prayers mm -hmm. and rather than worrying we mm -hmm. prayed and because we held hands and we prayed about our kids and about money and everything peace exactly the peace came upon our minds mm -hmm. and our hearts and that word there it says will guard it says the peace of god that passes all comprehension mm -hmm. will guard your mind and hearts, the Greek word there for guard is a word phureo, and it means a military guard mm -hmm. against an enemy. When, when we pray, when we trust God, the promise of the Bible is God will set a military guard mm -hmm. because we put our faith in Him, because our focus is on Him. Isaiah said, God will keep us in perfect peace mm -hmm. whose mind is fixed on Him. So when we when we go to God, we've got money problems, we've got kid problems, we've got all kinds of issues, but we're, rather than worrying and put our focus on the problem, mm -hmm. we go to God and pray, God promises a peace mm -hmm. that sets a military guard around our mind and heart so the devil can't attack. Mm -hmm. And then the peace comes, Karen, and then we're okay. Exactly. You know? And, and you know, that kind of attitude affects the whole house. Your Absolutely. children will be affected by that. You, bet. you know, they will grow up in a secure, peaceful environment. It, you bet. It, it, physical problems. I mean, when you when your children grow up in a home with parents in conflict and anxious, it can cause physical, Absolutely. mental, emotional problems and physical problems for us as well. Mm -hmm. So do not let the devil rob you of your peace and of your joy. You fight for it with prayer and the promise is the peace that passes understanding. God bless you guys. We have something we want you to watch. Watch this. I hope you're enjoying today's program. You know, Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen, our television program is broadcast into over 100 million homes every day, multiple times a day, 
across America in, into over 200 countries worldwide. And this is a joy for us to be able to come to you and also go literally around the world, helping millions of people to understand marriage from God's perspective, from a biblical perspective, and to succeed and thrive in their marriage and family relationships rather than suffering the horrible tragedy of family breakup, which I know many of you have. And we only are able to do what we do because of our faithful financial supporters. And if this ministry has touched you, if you believe in what we're doing, you know, marriage is under attack, family is under attack, and we're on the front lines of the battle to raise a biblical standard for marriage and families to stop the onslaught of divorce and family breakup and to help our society literally to heal and to help our children and grandchildren to have a better world by helping people understand marriage from a biblical perspective. Everyone can succeed in marriage. God never designs anything to fail, but we need to understand God's way for marriage. And that's exactly what we do here at Marriage Today. If you believe in what we're doing, would you please stand with us financially? I'm asking you to give your most generous financial gift right now. You can call the number that's there on your screen. You can give, you can send your gift in the mail. The address is right there on your screen. But also you can give on our secure website. Our web address is also there on your screen. I'm asking you right now, if you would, give your most generous gift. Nothing's too small, nothing's too large, but everything that you give equips us to go and reach more families, more couples, and to keep children together with their parents. Also, right now, you can become a monthly partner. We have a special premium. That information is also there on your screen. Please stand with us financially. God bless you. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners. And together, we can rebuild the dream of marriage for couples around the world. Being a rock-solid partner with Marriage Today grants you immediate access to an exclusive library of the ministry's resources and intimately connects you with our mission of helping couples succeed in marriage. And that's really why we became Rock Solid Partners, just because there was so much available to help us to help other marriages heal the way that, the way that we have. That's why we're tied into the ministry. We want to be able to bless and give so they can keep doing what they're doing. You're guaranteed if you listen to any of the resources, you read the resources, you come to a conference, you will be changed. Everyone has something to give, and there are millions of unreached couples who desperately need the marriage-strengthening resources of Marriage Today. That's why we need you to join us. Become a rock-solid partner with the ministry and mission of Marriage Today. Thank you for joining us today. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series, I Changed My Mind. Don't miss the first ever EXO Marriage Conference with Jimmy and Karen Evans, February 13th and 14th. Register at exomarriageconference.com. Become a rock solid partner today and connect with the mission of marriage today. Together, we can help couples succeed in marriage. This program is made possible by the generous support of our faithful partners.